This is an Amiga 500 Plus that's been on my shelf for a while, sulking and moaning at me. And this is the 68,000 CPU that was at the heart of it. So why is it not inside like it should be? Well, a couple of years ago, I got caught up in the whirlwind interest of the Pi Storm, a Raspberry Pi based emulation of the 68OX0 series of Motorola chips. And I thought that I'd bung one in here and have a play about with it. So that's what I did and quickly came to realize that as amazing as it was, it was a bit fiddly to set up and I just kind of lost interest in it. So now with the latest iteration of the Pi Storm available, the Pi Storm 32 Lite for the Amiga 1200, I thought I'd give it another go. Here at the shack, we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video, PCBWay. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices. And it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding, PCBWay also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right, on with the show. So the Pi Storm in the A500 Plus replaced the 68000 chip. So even at the very outset for some Amiga owners, this may have caused some concern, especially if you're not used to pulling chips and didn't want to risk breaking it. Also, the Pi Storm in the A500 Plus required lots of fiddling around with settings and telnetting into the Raspberry Pi over the network and using a second screen, etc. And well, in the end, I used the Pi for something else and put this A500 Plus back on the shelf. For the A1200, it appears that the journey through the storm is a lot easier. And so I want to see just how easy it is using my yellow Peril Amiga 1200, which is currently fitted with a 68030 accelerator with onboard real-time clock and 32 megabytes of memory. I've also got a GoTek drive in here and a CF card to IDE interface. I want to see what sort of a performance increase we get from this. So let's boot up the machine as it currently stands into sysinfo and do a benchmark test. Here we can see that we've got our real time clock, two megabytes of standard chip RAM. It's a PAL machine rocking a 68030 processor and no floating point unit. So let's see what this clocks in at. And that's not bad at all. We're 6.35 times faster than a stock Amiga 1200, nearly 15 times faster than a stock 600, and almost 50% as fast as the fastest Amiga that you could get when this program was written, an A4000 with a 25 megahertz 6A040. Not bad at all. Right, we're gonna be fiddling around inside the machine, so let's open the old girl up. I'm using my new Kaiweats electric precision screwdriver kit with a magnetic tip and LED light. And thanks to Kaiweats for sending this kit in, I've relegated most of my other screwdriver kits to the bottom drawer now, as this now handles all of my screwing needs. And there's a link in the description if you're interested. We'll unplug all the cables and then remove the trapdoor cover underneath. Now, if there's a knack to getting out full length cards like this without having to take the case apart, please let me know as I can never get a good grip on the flaming things and I clearly don't want to go prizing it out with a screwdriver, no matter how nice it is. So it's out with the case screws and off with the lid. With the case lid off, we can remove the keyboard by releasing the ribbon cable from its clamp. And it's nice to see the keyboard is holding up well to almost 18 months of use. Really pleased with this technique and I'll be using it again in a coming video, so keep an eye out for that. Here's the top side of the accelerator card with its clock battery and two 16 megabyte memory sticks. And over here is our CF card to IDE interface. And up in the corner is the GoTek drive and we'll be needing to take that out a little bit later also. 
Okay, let's get this accelerator card out, which is much easier to do from this approach. And although this is a thing of beauty and really helps to make the A1200 a usable machine, I'm hopeful that it will be absolutely ripped to shreds by the emulated processor inside the ARM powered Pi. So here it is, the star of the show, the Pi Storm 32 Lite. This one with a Raspberry Pi 3B installed and also preloaded with the latest software installed and configured correctly so we should be able to simply pop this in and get an immediate performance boost. Important to put it in the right way round of course, you can't really get it wrong as it only fits one way and if you're wondering what's with all the captain tape it's to prevent the Pi Storm from shorting out against the metal bottom of the keyboard. I think I'll get some adhesive foam pads on there at some point just to make sure. This is why I love the retro community, modern tech either keeping old machines going or giving them features and abilities that we just couldn't have dreamt of back in the day. With the keyboard back in, let's switch back on and if all goes well, we'll be booted back into Sysinfo. Well, it boots, so that's a good start. Keep your fingers crossed. And yes, look at that. We have no real time clock as there's not one fitted on the main board, but we do have a 6A040 along with a 6882FPU. And let's have a look at what this baby can do now. Okay, well, that's a pretty impressive improvement. We're now showing 698 times faster than a stock Amiga 1200, nearly 1700 times faster than a 600, and 46 times faster than a top of the range Amiga A4000. And no fiddling about at all, simply plug and play, amazing. But it's not just speed that the Pi Storm adds, it also adds a ton of memory. 236 meg in bank 1, 112 meg in bank 2 for a total of 348 meg of fast RAM, over 10 times as much as I previously had. There's no improvement on the standard 2 meg of chip RAM and I'm guessing that's because as fast RAM is only accessible by the CPU it's easy to emulate but chip RAM is accessed by the custom chips and they wouldn't have any way of getting to the memory on the Pi. If there's another reason, please let me know in the comments. Ejecting the floppy and rebooting the machine boots from the CF card and brings me back to my workbench screen where, as I would hope, nothing looks any different, except that I'm now showing an 040 processor in the top left and I'm showing all of the additional memory and of course no accurate date until I put a real-time clock module on the Amiga mainboard. So let's just see how quick this thing is by throwing something at it that the Amiga always found challenging, 3D engines. Gloom is well known as one of the best Doom-like games on the Amiga, but playing it on a stock A1200 was, shall we say, not a smooth experience. It meant either playing in a window the size of a stamp to get anywhere near a decent frame rate, or if you wanted that bigger screen, you were down in a single figure FPS range. You really needed an accelerator card with a 68060 to get decent gameplay. So let's see how this Pi Storm with a simulated 1.1 GHz 68040 can shove those pixels around. Well, that's smooth as butter, so no complaints there. So let's take this to the next level. The Pi Storm 32 can also emulate hard disks, and of course, with all of the extra CPU power and memory, we've got the option of running later versions and variants of Workbench. 
I've decided to try Caffeine OS which is built on MU68K and comes fully configured to use with the Pi Storm 32. So it should be just a matter of removing the existing CF card and replacing the stock MU68K SD card on the Pi Storm with this 64 gig card that contains the latest version of Caffeine OS. There's a link in the description. So let's try that. Oh, before we do that, there's also this really nice little rear port adapter for the Pi Storm 32 Lite, which allows you to extend the Pi's USB port, SD card slot, and importantly, the HDMI port to the rear of the machine. Caffeine OS utilizes retargetable graphics to put the video output of the Amiga through the HDMI port, allowing higher resolutions and higher bit depths for more colors. So let's install that and we'll need to remove the GoTech drive first. Well, that went smoothly and booting the machine, we get the nice MU68 and PyStorm logos. And after only a few seconds, we're at the Caffeine OS workbench through an HDMI connection and running our super fast CPU, memory and hard disk courtesy of the Pi. The only thing wrong here is that the display is outside the boundaries of this monitor, but I strongly suspected that was the monitor itself. And when I checked with another one, it was fine. So I'll no doubt dig into Caffeine OS and or some other Amiga OS's in future episodes, but hopefully this episode has shown you just how simple it is to upgrade your Amiga 1200 with a Pi Storm 32 Lite. Hey, if I can do it, you can do it because I'm basically an idiot. Do you have a Pi Storm 32? Did you find the upgrade process straightforward? Let me know in the comments. Thanks again to Kai Wheats for the new screwdriver set. And don't forget to check the description for the links and a discount code to get you 10% off. Right, until next time in the shack, it's goodbye from me. Bye.